Hey everybody, Aaron here. Welcome back to my anime review. Today we look at Blade Runner 2022, which is a short 15 minute OVA that bridges the gaps between the first Blade Runner and the second Blade Runner. Now, I, you know, because I just said 15 minutes, and by the way, really, to be honest, it's probably less than 15 minutes. It's probably like 11 to 12 minutes long. Uh, if you cut out the opening uh, narration stuff and you also get rid of the credits, obviously, you're probably looking at like a 12 minute show at best. Um, and that's the thing, I wasn't sure if I wanted to even do a review of it because of that fact. Because there are some issues with this short OVA, but what I plan to do for this review so this way it's not like 10 seconds long, I will talk a little bit about Blade Runner the first one, I will talk about how this anime kind of bridges the gap in between the first one and second one, my thoughts and theories on how it's important to the second one, and my overall enjoyment of it. So hopefully you guys enjoy this like short video. Um, well, it could be short, but I don't know, all the time I had, maybe it'll be like 10 minutes long for all I know. Now, in case you guys don't know, Blade Runner is actually an old movie that came out, I think, in the early 80s. Uh, it was directed by Ridley Scott, which you guys might know, know from, like, Alien fame and stuff like that. Um, and Prometheus, which is one of the more recent works. Uh, he did Alien, I think, Resurrection as of recent, too. Now, what essentially the whole concept of Blade Runner was, was we had this main character named Deckard who his job was he was a blade runner now blade runners were tasked with killing off these kind of bioengineered beings known as replicants replicants for the most part were deemed uh, uh, essentially what humans should be in terms of what they can do they, they look like humans they act like humans but they have a lot of strength and they sometimes can be a little odd in terms of human you know, like the same concept of humans but they were made to do our jobs that we didn't want to do so they were sent to other planets they were sent to other things to, to mine on different planets etc and i believe that the whole concept of it is that they were mining on the moon at one point and then had somehow worked their way back illegally on earth and that is where when they got to back to earth they needed to be eliminated because they were reaching a kind of expiration date because all um, replicants have this kind of date that they must be eliminated by uh, they don't really ever fully go into that they some say that they go insane some say that it's because that's just the end of their lifespan that they will die eventually after that too but it's it's kind of implied that it's a little bit of both that they get a little crazy and reckless when they start getting close to that expiration date but so we have our whole first step, the whole first movie focusing on eliminating this group of replicants that have kind of infiltrated into human society and Deckard goes after them all and here's where the the different variants because as I said I've watched several versions of this you might be like well what are the different differences between the several versions of this Depend Ridley Scott is, is a great director I mean I, you know I've, I've seen a lot of his documentaries on various things and stuff like that the problem is, is that Ridley Scott also is someone who likes to change his lore up when it feels kind of fitting so what he actually ended up doing and not all those actors agree with that by the way um, what he ended up doing with Blade Runner is he changed it multiple times. He originally had a, a narration kind of concept from uh, the main actor Deckard who was actually Harrison Ford and he would narrate all these scenes together and talk about all these different things and you know it was done very hap uh, haphazardly to say the least. So what they ended up doing was they ended up kind of cutting that stuff out and they went for just a more typical ending. Now the problem was was that then he wanted to change it again by changing Deckard's character and this is kind of a spoiler but it's also not at the same time so if you haven't seen Blade Runner I would advise probably not watching the rest of this video from here on out because I will talk about the ending a little bit here. Um, so that's your warning right now? Okay I'm going to talk about it right now. Um, so what essentially happens in the movie is Deckard you know essentially sa you know saves one of the replicants because he falls in love with her and you know they go off into the sunset depending on the version of the movie some have it where they are then now hunted by someone at the end or they're possibly going to be hunted by someone at the end or that you find out that Deckard might be a replicant and a lot of uh, a lot of lore behind Ridley Scott's version of you know that ending leads everyone to believe that yes Harrison Ford's character Deckard is a replicant himself he just doesn't realize it yet and you know a lot of people had issues with that I mean I, I, I'm mixed with it I, I understand why it would work for the second movie but at the same time I'm like it's, it's, it's up in the air but that is considered the canon lore because it's done by Ridley Scott so regardless of what people agree or not agree with on this case it is implied heavily that Deckard is a replicant himself but um, what's interesting about the anime movie is that, as I said before, it actually takes place several years after the first movie <clears throat> and follows what looks like two replicants who are going after a facility that's making replicants. Now, 
this is not very this is not explained very well in this movie. I hate to say it. it it's this movie kind of throws a lot of narration at you for a very short amount of time, and then also just kind of goes off onto this action sequence of events where, you know, we see them uh, see both replicants, with clearly replicants, attack this facility where they also build replicants and destroy it, which causes a big setback for any more of the replicates to be made. Now, why this is important to know is that because most likely this is why there's such a big time period between the original movie was supposed to be taking place in 2019 and then this anime is 2022 and then the newest movie is going to be taking place 2049 if I'm not mistaken. And I think that's the name of the whole movie too is uh, Blade Runner 2049. Now, I'm presuming that that because they destroyed the facility they haven't built any replicants or haven't had to worry about replicants in the society because it's been so long since they actually were able to create more. That's what I'm taking away from this is that this is why this is kind of important because we would know now, oh, this is what happens to the replicants and, and maybe the newer models are coming out and there's some issue with them because I believe the 2049 also deals with, again, Blade Runners going after replicants. So if there's been such a gap in time, there must be an issue that caused this gap of time. So the anime is kind of important. I mean, it's not super important to know, I think, but I feel that unless they do a narration part at the beginning of this, the new movie coming out, you won't understand why this is even happening. So it is kind of important to watch. Um, but the story, I feel like, could have been explained a little bit better. I think it's a little too ambiguous in a lot of ways. Um, you know, it's, it's directed by the same guy who did uh, Cowboy Bebop and um, Terror Resonance. So, I mean, uh, Samurai Champloo. So, he's done some great works, obviously. And his stylized uh, of how he did Blade Runner was spectacular. I mean, I don't know if you guys can tell from the thumbnail I'll probably be using. I went for a thumbnail that tried to incorporate the beauty of this whole anime. Um, it, it really is. It's gorgeous. That's one of the things I'll say right now, flat out. It is a gorgeous anime. It's... It reminds me a lot of, if you guys remember the Animatrix, which came out way back when. Uh, it has a lot of the stylings of that, so definitely if you like you know, anime that's kind of similar to that, you'll like this. Um, you know, even though the Animatrix, many of you will go, oh, it's done by different people. I know it's done by different people, but uh, some of the stories in there kind of remind me of this one. Now, the thing is that, you know, it's probably the biggest fault of it is because it's so short, I can't fully say that it's like, oh, it's the best thing in the world, go watch it. It's kind of hard to do that. Uh, you know, voice acting, sound-wise, are all incredible. I love the voice actors. They, they're solid voice actors, I think. They're all, by the way, this is an English dub, so I don't know if there's a Japanese version of it, but there is an English dub. If you go to Crunchyroll right now and watch that, that's how you get to uh, watch it. But, you know, I do like the voice actors. I think they do a good job of what they have, essentially. But other than that, there's not much to say about this. You know, it's one of those shorts that... You can watch it just for either the action concept of it, or you can watch it for the little bit of lore you get in setting up for the next movie, which is kind of important. So, you know, it's up to you guys if you want to watch it or not. I would highly advise watching the first movie before the second one comes out. I saw uh, several people on Twitter talk about this uh, recently, where they're saying that they haven't seen the first movie, they want to watch the second one. <clears throat> this is a uh, the second movie is a direct sequel, folks. You gotta watch the first one, regardless if you, if you don't like older movie or not, because it's basically setting up everything for the second movie. There's no, oh, I'll watch the second movie and understand, no, it's, you know, already we can tell that uh, Deckard's character comes back from the trailers we see, and we see that the replicate concepts are back in full drive. There are a lot of things you probably will miss out if you don't see the first movie, which is a shame, so I would definitely recommend seeing the first movie. I would recommend seeing the director's cut, version. I think it's the better version. The one with narration is really terrible to my mind. Uh, and then the one that came after, I forget the name of the director's, uh, the one after the director's cut, but that one was not as good either. So either look for the final cut, which is a good uh, good version of the director's cut, or the director's cut itself. Those two will work for the most part. Uh, you know, the final cut, I believe, is the last version that came out on Blu-ray as of recent. So you can, I think that's the one I own too. So you can definitely check that out. And I think it has also uh, the original version and I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think it does. Anyways, uh, if I had to review Blade Runner 2022, you know, back or back out in 2022, I think it's called, I would say I give it a solid B minus. Now you might be saying, wow, that's kind of generous. I mean, it, it's a 10 minute thing that you just said has no story. It's just because here's the thing for what it does in 10 minutes, it does really well. I mean, it looks beautiful. Uh, the story is enough to kind of keep you intrigued, and also it's a good way of getting into the Blade Runner lore. I, I think for a lot of people, it might intrigue them enough to watch the original one. 
So, I mean, I have no issue with it. I, I think that the lack of story is what kills it a little bit, but even then, you don't really need it for this. It, it's not going to be super action-heavy, at or story-heavy, I should say, at times. It just does a bare minimum in terms of narration and concepts. You're not going to really even know these characters' names by the end of this. Like, they, they talk about their names, I think, twice in this whole thing, and you really are, like, left like, I don't, I don't know what the heck's going on with this, but that's kind of enough, I think, to trigger some people into watching the first one because they want to see what it's all about. So, definitely go check it out. It's, it's, ascent. it's essentially, it's, again, 10 minutes. It's not a big deal. You could definitely check it out and be done with it really fast. Anyways, I will talk to you guys later. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this review and kind of backstory. And I thought it would be shorter, but look at that. It's almost 11 minutes, so I do apologize for that. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video nonetheless. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great blessed day, everyone. God bless you all. As always, if you like this review, you know what to do. Until I pass across again the next review, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone.